Welcome to Beyond the Reiki Gateway, a podcast reserved for the spiritually curious. Journey further with Reiki Masters Kathleen Johnson and Andrea Kennedy through in-depth conversations, many featuring inspiring and intriguing special guests to enrich your unique spiritual progression. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Reiki Gateway. I'm Kathleen, and I'm here with Andrea, my co-host. And today we're taking the episode or the podcast in a little bit of a different direction. This one came about as a result of a conversation I had very recently with someone who I would always describe as being very far along on the spiritual path, very well-trained, very knowledgeable, well-educated. And I happened to mention the shift in passing. And to my utter surprise, this individual asked me, what is that? I was really surprised by that. So I mentioned that to Andrea, and it started a conversation between the two of us. And we realized that maybe we are doing our listeners a disservice by assuming that everyone knows what that is. As Andrea pointed out to me, we talk about it a lot in our own lives with clients, with students, and we get to the point where, as Andrea put it, we're nose blind. We think that since we talk about it so much, everybody must know what this is. But we realize that that is simply not the case. So we decided to dedicate an episode to the shift. And as you recall, we recently had a Q&A episode, and we felt that this topic is just way too broad and too big to be included in a Q&A. The Q&A was mostly about Reiki, but the shift affects every single one of us. And we thought that it would be very, very fitting for us to do this episode today as a service to our listeners and as a way to let everyone know what we're talking about when we mention the shift. Thanks a lot, Kathleen. Yeah, that was an interesting revelation you shared with me about that conversation. And yeah, I mean, I said nose blind, but I think our listeners know what that means from from television. (laughs) But I guess it's not really nose blind, but I don't know. I can't think of actually a better term. But anyway, I think we just assume that we're all on the same page. And I know for myself, I tend to say the same thing a million times. And you know, it is hard to remember that everybody's not in on all these conversations that I'm having. So it was a good sort of reality check there. So I'm really glad that you brought it up. The other thing I want to say about this is, you know, it does come by other names. So people might see it online being referred to not as the shift, but maybe ascension or the earth going out of the third dimension So it could be described in any number of ways. But here we tend to call it the shift. Jody Helm, which we've had on the show before, as a matter of fact, in December, I think it was the episode right before Christmas 2022, Jody's episode, we actually called Your Guide to the Shift from the Archangels. The shift is very much in Jody's wheelhouse, I guess. Uh, She talks about it a lot. Now, our listeners might also recall Deborah Lupien when she was a guest, Voice of the Akashic Records. She talked about the shift, but I don't know if she uses that term. Can you recall, Kathleen? I actually think she did, Andrea, although I can't swear to it. I know Deborah referred to it a lot as moving into 5D, right? the fifth dimension. I do remember that. And I remember being confused because we hear different things out there online uh, and in conversations. Some people call it moving from the third to the fourth dimension. Deborah says fifth dimension. I think I even asked her about that on that episode. I asked Deborah about that. But regardless of the terminology, the idea is really the same. And 
from my understanding, it really is describing an ascension, I guess, in vibration. And what does that even mean? Let's take this even a little bit more mainstream, which is typically my way of doing things. And that would be, let's think about this in these terms. What we've created as humans, institutions and ways we treat each other and outlooks and opinions and things like that, even laws, right, that we've created, they feel old. They feel outdated to a lot of us. And it just so happens that the people that are feeling like these things aren't suitable anymore are on a spiritual path, this awakening path. You know, we even did a an episode called Are You Awakening? Boy, that was an oldie, I think, Kathleen. I think it was season one. I think it was season one. An oldie, but a goodie, I will say. Yes, an oldie, but a goodie. So there's a whole nother episode. If you're interested in the topic, you might look back upon and uh, give those a listen. So what we're seeing now is this movement all centered around acting, thinking, and being in vibrations, in energy, in life, just in a higher way. So a lot of people want to just live in a higher way, a more loving way, a more inclusive way. And I'm not talking about politics here or anything like that, but people are just wanting to get back to living in a world that feels better to them. They want to lessen the contrast of energy that they've been feeling. And it seems like in recent years, it's just been a crescendo of contrast. What do you think, Kathleen? You're absolutely right. And I'm glad you brought it down to the uh, topic of vibration, because as we know, everything is energy. Everything has a frequency, everything in the universe and probably the multiverse, (laughs) right? So what we've been living through for literally thousands of years Well, it's been known as the the Piscean Age, the Age of Pisces. And as we probably know, that hasn't really worked out for us as humans. A lot of wars, a lot of corruption, a lot of sorrow, oppression, those kinds of things. And it's not in alignment with who we truly are. At our core, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And it's just not who we are to live this way. So finally, as Andrea said, we are beginning to wake up collectively and realize that there is a better way to do things. So the old way was very exclusive, right? There are certain groups and factions that have always been excluded or marginalized. And so many more of us nowadays are realizing that we want to live in an inclusive manner. Everybody's included. We can all live together in harmony and we can do this. And indeed, we were meant to do this by Creator. The shift, as Andrea also said, it started a while ago. It actually officially started in 2012, okay? But we are now in the age of Aquarius. Lately, in the past few years, you can feel that crescendo building. You can feel the collective energies becoming, I don't know how to describe it, except I'll just use my own interpretation. There are some days when it feels very heavy and dense, and it almost feels hard to breathe. But there are other days when you can sense that there's something happening, it's going to be big, and it's just right around the corner, and it's going to be for the highest good of all of us. And as someone who is sensitive to energy, and I know many of you listening are, I can feel it. So yeah, we are reaching a point, I always call it the tipping point, where the majority of us are going to be in that group that are hungry for inclusivity. Yes, I've heard you refer to that tipping point before on the podcast, Kathleen. So yes, yes, yes. And it makes me think of that whole principle, the hundredth monkey. And I don't know what episode that was that I talked about that, but I first read about that in the book Power Versus Force and totally love that concept. 
this is interesting too. We were talking about how things have escalated in the past few years. Let's talk about COVID. How can we even talk about the shift without COVID? That did so many different things. And of course, it was unlike anything we've collectively been through, you know, that any of us can remember really in these times where we can be connected to people all around the world at any given moment and know what's happening all around the world. We all, all of humanity went through this together. What an interesting time, especially now that we can reflect and look back. But that got everybody to hit the pause button on their lives. And so many people took advantage of that opportunity and started a process of reflection about who they've been in their life, what they really want out of life, what their goals truly are. I mean, we could go on and on. But my point is, is that for as long as, I don't know, modern history or something, we've created so many things in our world out of fear. So a lot of the things that we've created and ways of going through our lives have had this sort of foundation that was built in fear. And as people are waking up to who they truly are, and what I mean by that is every person has value, every person has light, every person is a sovereign being over their own energy field, every person, I said it, but I'm going to say it again, has value, every person. And as more of us are willing to believe not only that we have power ourselves and that we have value, once we begin to acknowledge that within ourselves, we know that other people do too. And no one is excluded from that. And you mentioned that inclusivity. Well, of course. And so as we wake up to to the worthiness of all people, including ourselves, we want better for not just ourselves, but we want better for everyone, the collective. And our fears and living from these limiting beliefs that we did for so many years, that's just not who we are anymore. So of course, we don't want to keep creating from that fear place. But even if we wanted to, that's not in us anymore. We're creating from higher emotion and we're working toward manifesting love in ourselves, in, you know, what we see in our day to day lives. And of course, that leaks into the collective and the big picture. And to me, I think it all comes down to fear and how many people are letting go of fears. And as they do that, that heavy vibration of fear is no longer weaving its way through our days, through what we create, through our just way we operate in the world. And to me, that's what the shift is, a lightening away from fear toward more joy, more love. I hope that made sense. It did make sense. It makes a lot of sense. In fact, I'm really glad you brought up the topic of fear because all you have to do is look back upon humanity's history and you can see how so much of what happened is fear-based. The wars, just let's talk about the wars for a moment. I mean, wars are fear-based. Fear of losing something, fear of the other. I mean, I could go on and on, but they're fear-based. And that's how we've operated as a the human race for thousands of years, fear-based. Our laws are put into place because of fear. And I'm not saying get rid of the laws, of course not. But everything that we just sort of take for granted, accept and say, oh yeah, that's just the way it is. So much of it was built on fear. Not much was built on love. And what we see now is that those things that were built on fear, they're starting to fall away. And I'm also really glad you brought up COVID. How can we not talk about the shift and not talk about COVID, right? I know for me personally, COVID had a huge impact on my life and what I'm doing with it. And I know you, Andrea, it had the same effect on you. I mean, in different ways, of course. 
And I bet most of our listeners can say the same thing and have their own stories of how COVID affected them. And this is not to dismiss or uh, say that it wasn't a terrible thing, because it was. It was so much tragedy and sorrow, and it's, it's unbearable sometimes to think about it. But the reasons for it go way beyond that. My goodness, I see so many changes that I think are for the better coming about because of the pandemic. That is not, again, to discount the the tragedy of it. There was so much fear. Our whole world almost was built on it, right? Yeah, most certainly. And what we're seeing is a systematic sort of spotlight, I will say, on different areas, different things that we've created. We've had some really big things happening recently, too. I remember when the Queen of England passed away, she had been on the throne for how long was it, Kathleen? Was it something like 70 years or something? That was the figure I was going to say. Yeah, a long time. (laughs) I remember people saying in the news reports that she was the only monarch they'd ever known in their whole lives. And so what a huge shift for them, you know, just in their day-to-day life living over in that country. But what I want to say about that is it really, I think, was an opportunity for a lot of people to look at the monarchy, look how that institution, oh my goodness, that goes back so far in history, but it's coming to a place where a lot of people are questioning, is that reflective of who we are? Is that fitting for today? Is this who we want to be? And when you couple that with Harry and Meghan and, you know, all of their <laughs> yeah. decisions to part ways, it's just something I think that just comes to my mind when we're talking about examples of this shift and examples of opportunities where we're kind of reevaluating. That's really a, a big, big word that's coming to me right now is it's a time of reflection, but also reevaluation, looking around and asking ourselves, why do we do things that way? Is that in resonance? Oh, there's a word for us, resonance. But is that in resonance with how I think and feel and who I want to be and who I want to be involved with? I mentioned the monarchy, which has been around for eons, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. It's steeped in tradition. And there's a certain protocol and a certain, you know, all of that. And I certainly am not judging the monarchy or anything like that. I'm just using this as an example of something that was created long ago. And people have changed and evolved so much through the years. Now we have an opportunity to look at what we created in the past and start to do that process, that reevaluation. But that's just one example that I'm thinking of in my mind right now. Right. It goes back to what I said a few moments ago. Your monarchy is a really good example. It goes along with the institutions that we've built, you know, as a, as a collective, as humanity over the years. They're starting to crumble. The monarchy is a good example of that because even though it's still obviously in place, and I'm like you, I'm not saying I'm either uh, pro-monarchy or against monarchy. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that what I've seen and what I've noticed over in the UK is a growing contingent of people wondering if this is really something we want to continue with. Like you said, it's been in place for eons, but look at how far we've come in those eons? And does the monarchy really fit? And something that kept coming to me when you were talking about it is a big part of the monarchy is elevating humans to almost godlike status. And for me personally, I'm not really on board with that. And I wonder if that's all part of the reevaluation process. Like, you know, we really need to look at what we're doing here and Asking ourselves, does this serve us? Does this resonate? Is this in alignment with who we are or who we want to be? 
And that's all part of the reflection and the reevaluation. And all these things are part of this overarching event that's happening to humanity and the planet, which is important, known as the shift or, you know, moving into the new consciousness or moving into the new earth. I mean, as you said, there's so many names for it. Ascension is one of the ones I like because it's, uh, that's really what it is. We're ascending into a higher vibration. Right. It does kind of describe that, you know, with the very word itself. But one thing that came to my mind while you were talking, Kathleen, about the monarchy and putting importance or focusing on certain individuals, and we can really look back at who have we trusted above all others and who who do we give our power to? And I think right now for a lot of people, they're asking themselves that, and we're really kind of having the wool lifted, I would say, these people, they're just people. And guess what? A lot of them have scandals and, you know, we've been seeing this. Oh, yes. They've been <laughs> doing things that we would deem as not very, um, I don't know, loving, not good demonstrations of proper character or whatever it might be. But a lot of these people have skeletons in their closet. And we've been seeing that, I think, also over the past few years. The question for me is, who do we trust? And going back to COVID again, you know, I know here in the U.S., oh, my goodness. I mean, who could we trust? I remember days thinking, I can't trust anything I hear about this virus and about what to do because today they say this, uh, last week it was this. There was just such a lack of guidance that we could trust anymore. And it really made me look at who do I place my trust in and do they deserve it? <laughs> right. Good question. Yeah, I think it's a kind of a, a common thread. And now in the U.S., as we we're recording this episode, what are we seeing now? The financial institutions. So here we go. It's just another one that I heard about the other day, I heard some statistics, so many people leaving organized religion. Well, organized religion's been around, you know, for eons too. So people are looking at frameworks that they have entrusted or been involved in, that kind of thing. And they're deciding, I don't belong there anymore. And I just think it's not some spiritual woo-woo thing. I mean, we can look at that for so many people. The interesting thing for me is that you mentioned that conversation you had at the top of the show. Yes. And that was a spiritual person. Didn't know what the shift was. But you know what? I think a lot of people may not understand the shift or know what's going on or whatever. But I'll bet you every single person can look at their life over the past few years and say, oh, yeah, I've done that. I've asked myself these questions. I want different things today than what I did five years ago, 10 years ago, et cetera. Whether we know the terminology or anything that goes along with it, these big ideas, as you said, it is affecting us all. We just might not have a label for it. But the truth is, because it's affecting us all, we have this whole collective energy with it. All of that energy is really fueling this whole process, I think. Of course. There's so much energy being put into uh, the awakening, if you will, the, uh, the ascension. And that has ripples that are infinite, correct? We know how that is. When people start emanating that type of energy, when they're coming from a place of love as, a, as opposed to a place of fear, the ripples emanated from their energy field are infinite. And we have no idea where they end up. We just know they go on and on and on. They are operating from the vibration of love as opposed to vibration of fear, which then contributes to the overall 
development and evolution of the collective humanity and the planet. And I always say and the planet because the planet is involved in her own awakening, moving into higher dimensions. And she's taking humanity along with her. (laughs) That's for sure. There was just so much fear. And I want to just go back to what you said about COVID because there was so much fear. And you hit on a really good point about early on, we didn't know what was going on because we were not getting information we could trust, right? And the fear was palpable. I I don't know if you recall how you felt during those early days of the pandemic. And I have to be honest, I don't remember much about 2020. It, It really is a bit of a blur. But I do remember being very, very frightened, especially early on, and trying to get a sense of what was happening and get some accurate, trustworthy information seemed like an impossible task. So the fear was, you could cut it with a knife, and I could feel it in the air just hanging every day. And I know it wasn't just my fear. There was billions of people that were living in that fear. The effect it had on us to really stop what we were doing, reevaluate, reflect. So many things that I think are based in love are coming out of that. And I've called it this before. I look at COVID as not only a wake up call to humanity, but a cosmic slap upside the head. Like, hey, you know, here it is, folks. Get your act together. Here's your notice, right? And that's putting it rather crudely, but that's what I have felt all along COVID was. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, I think that a lot of us can relate to, you know, guidance that we, you know, it could be that gut feeling or whatever, right? And how does it start out? It starts out as a whisper, right? Like something soft and cuddly, (laughs) and then we don't follow it. And then it gets a little louder and louder and louder. And then maybe COVID, the slap in the face. Certainly, we've had little things to try to wake us up before, probably individually and more globally. Nothing like that to get our attention. And you're so right. I do remember being fearful, especially at the very beginning of COVID, because it was unlike anything. And the scale was unlike anything affecting us all globally. So much tragedy can happen with natural disasters. But something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life, it made such an impression on me, was the tsunami. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And I think it was around 2005. I don't recall. But I think, again, people can Google me and send me letters and say how wrong I am. But I think (laughs) over a quarter of a million people ended up dying from that. And I remember when that happened, and I don't know why, but it really hit me. It was a moment in time for me where I just really felt that personally. I kind of went off on a tangent. Anyway, I think we've had these sort of moments throughout life that have allowed us to pause but nothing like COVID. And so, yeah, in the early days, right? And we wanted to trust something. We wanted to hold on to something. Like I said, everything was here today, gone tomorrow. It's this, it's that, whatever. So it was all shifting sands and again, nothing we could hold on to and the uncertainty. And I think anytime we have uncertainty, I think fear is right there with it because We've got no lifeline. We've got no history of how it worked out last time. So we're flying out there with no safety net, it feels like. Nothing to draw from. But a point I'd like to make is on this trust issue. I think this is such a huge part of this whole thing. Because I think this whole shift business is calling us home to ourselves. And it is all about taking our power back, not holding anyone above anyone else. Sure, we have differences and different people will excel at different things. Different people will be more 
I don't know, visible than other people. But every person has value. And what I guess I'm trying to say is when we pull back our power that we've invested in so many things, so many people that probably don't even deserve it, really, when we pull back our power and we just decide that we are all worthy, we all deserve love, we all deserve respect, and nobody's a magical guru or whatever that we need to follow and worship and all of that. All of this to me is a call home to trust ourselves. And when we feel in our own energy, so I'm going to get kind of woo-woo here or something, but (laughs) I know you know this, Kathleen, right? Because people that feel energy are just intuitive people or whatever it is. I think that's most people. We all know that sinking feeling or that feeling of, ooh, yes, you know, in our bodies. We need to trust that more. And I think that all of these things that we've been talking about help us instead of looking for who to trust, what to trust, who to believe. Instead of doing that, we come home to ourselves and say, how does that feel to me? And when we do that with the higher knowledge of, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay, regardless of what happens. And, you know, that takes us to the big fear, right? The fear of death. So that's a whole nother episode. (laughs) It really is. (laughs) It really is. But I've always said, if we can just get past the fear of death, the entire experience on earth would be completely different. And I still so believe that. Oh, of course. Absolutely. I so, so believe that. But it's such an overarching fear to so many things. But anyway, I guess my point is that we have such power we've overlooked within ourselves for probably the better part of our lives. To me, this whole shift, this ascension, you know, all of this change that we're having an opportunity to take part in is so exciting. And it's all about reclaiming the power we've had all along, but we just gave it away, not even realizing it. Yes, because we've never lived any other way, have we? That's right. We have always looked outside ourselves to find the answers, correct? We're conditioned to do that from birth, basically. And this isn't anything new. This has been going on for, again, eons. There's That's the word today, I guess. But we have been conditioned and trained to look at things externally and to get our answers externally instead of listening to that still, small voice that's within each of us and that really knows what's going on with us and can guide us in a way that no one on the external can. And the issue of trust is so important, Andrea, and I'm glad you talked about that because we have to take our power back because that's where that's where our power is. It's within us. And I think we can see that playing out nowadays in the political spectrum in our country. We can just see it playing out how you can't really trust anybody, right? It's just like, what is happening? And I think that too is a sign. It's a sign of the shift that, okay, it's like, all right, you see what's happening all around you? Institutions are crumbling, financial institutions, political institutions, religious institutions. I can go on and on, but I won't. I think you get the drift. So what do we turn to? Ourselves. We take back the power that we've been giving away to those people that we thought knew better than us, who had the answers. And now we're realizing The emperor has no clothes. (laughs) They have no more answers than we do. In fact, from what I'm seeing, they have a lot fewer answers (laughs) than we do. So it's time to take back that power, stand in our truth. Because as you said, Andrea, we know. We know how something makes us feel. Our bodies tell us that sinking feeling you referenced or that, ooh, that excitement. When something really resonates and you know it's good for you, 
We have to start paying attention to that, not the talking heads who are all around us. And I feel that I can't overstate that. And I know I'm getting a little passionate here, but I feel very strongly about it. And I think when people start to do exactly that, take back their power, oh my goodness, we can, I guess, figuratively move mountains, maybe literally, who knows. But we have so much power that we are not using. And if we are using it, we're handing it over to others. That has to stop. Absolutely. And I do want to make clear, we're not saying like, don't listen to people or whatever. Oh, no. It is so important. Yeah, we have to listen to people. And but here's the thing. If you don't agree with them, uh, that's OK. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and the other thing is, it isn't about having to convince everybody to agree with you either. So you do you and I'll do me. And guess what? We'll both be OK. Exactly. But I think part of this is it is about having a mutual respect. Because when we're not operating out of fear anymore, you having your own idea does not uh, threaten me, you see. And so we can cohabitate. And it reminds me of that bumper sticker. You know, it's been around years, that coexist bumper sticker. Right. Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't that just be great? Exactly. Right. That's a great goal is just coexist. Yeah, we're going to have leaders and stuff like that. I mean, we're, you know, they're going to be leaders. They'll be followers. But where a system has mutual respect for each other, instead of using and abusing the other parties and exploitation and, you know, you name it, in getting away with things that well, we would just never consider doing ourselves. You see, there's just so much contrast. I'm real excited. I've mentioned it, I think, on the show before. I've always called it the great transformation. Yes. So see, there's another way to look at it, the great transformation. And I don't know about you, Kathleen. I just feel like I was just meant to be here now. Don't you feel like that? Of course. I, I think every one of us on the planet was meant to be here now. In fact, I, I just know with that sense of clear cognizance that we chose to be here right now because we we wanted to be a part of this oh pivotal change in humanity and in the planet there are times when i ask myself why did i choose this <laughs> but overall i think it's wonderful i mean what an opportunity you know it is and it reminds me i had a a mentoring session the other day and my client brought up a conversation that got pretty testy with some people and he was outnumbered, we'll just say, and it was a little bit political and they had a difference of opinion and it really kind of stuck with him, I guess, after the exchange. And the question is, you know, what do you do with that? Or, you know, something along those lines. And it was really interesting because the answer that I offered him, it just kind of came through to, to tell him was that those people who might not be on the same page, you can call them whatever term, maybe they don't see the, the light the way you do or whatever it is. But what I want to say is those people who offer us contrast to where we are, those are wonderful opportunity bringers. You know, they're doing their part. And I want to really shine a light on this because we're not sitting over here on our cloud of ascension saying, <laughs> oh, yeah, you yeah, know, right. we're doing all this. And, you know, you people who don't know. Yeah, no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> you know what? The contrast is the beauty. Without the contrast, we wouldn't be able to uh, shake free and choose better and all of that. And so when we're in disagreement with someone, like maybe they're more in fear than we are or whatever it is, I hope that we can remember that they're here too by choice, right? right. They're not here by accident either. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. And guess what? They signed on to live in that vibration at that time, you know, to have their spiritual path. 
And some of us might be like, well, that doesn't sound very spiritual, you know. Well, let's not judge people. Right. Um, the thing is, <laughs> if we don't have other people to offer a, a contrast to who we are, how do we know who we are? Exactly. How do we make choices that come from an informed place? How do we get that sinking feeling versus the rising feeling? We have to have contrast, and it is through contrast that we revise and we grow and we evolve because it is through the agreement or I'll say resonance and dissonance that we refine our perceptions of not only who we are, but the world around us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's the everyone who comes into our lives. And I mean everyone. It could be a cashier at a checkout counter. It can be a stranger you pass on the street who says good morning to you or something. Every one of those individuals is in your life for a reason. And we will not understand all the reasons because we do not have universal knowledge. We won't have that until we move into spirit. But we just have to, as I say all the time, accept and trust that this is all happening because it needs to. And that goes for people who disagree with us. And it is a good thing because even though it may fire us up and we get all huffy and <laughs> what the heck are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Those of us who are in that reflective phase, it moves us into that and allows us to say, hmm, maybe I'm too much in my own echo chamber, if you will. And it listening to someone else can really shake things up. And that can really lead to growth too. But if we get so locked into what we think we know, then we're just kind of spinning our wheels. But even those people who make us crazy, they're here for a reason. They opted to come here too. And they're all doing their part, as you said. <laughs> As a human, you're kind of like, okay, I guess that's what's happening, but it is. And I think when we realize that and accept that, it makes all the difference because they're doing their part just like we are. Oh, yeah. I want to emphasize what you said earlier about us <laughs> sitting on an ascension cloud. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not happening. I don't pretend to know anything more than anyone else. Everyone has their own gifts and talents and abilities. I don't see it my as my job to convince anybody of anything, as you said earlier. What I see as my job, if you will, is to put my truth out there, what I've learned to be true. And if it resonates with whomever I'm interacting, that's great. And I'm really happy about that. But if it doesn't, that's okay, too. And there are no hard feelings. But putting it out there and living your truth and letting your light shine, that's so important. Yeah, but there's no ascension cloud here. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, I know it, right? It's just a journey. You know, we're all on it. It's a journey. Exactly. Just doing what we can. I always think of uh, Ram Das. his quote, we're all just walking each other home. I love that quote. and. I go back to that time and again, especially if I get frustrated with someone. And I think, yeah, that's that's so true. All just walking each other home. Yeah. Yeah. I love that quote, too. We all have different levels of awareness and that's no accident either. It all goes together. It all goes together. And, you know, before we wrap up the show, Kathleen, I'm wondering if we could offer our listeners any advice or anything. And I've told a lot of people lately, it seems, to consider looking at different aspects of their own lives and discerning, does this serve me anymore? I think a lot of us talking about how institutions are so old and, you know, all of that, but, you know, let's take it to the individual's life. And what I mean by that is, We'll just kind of get into a rut, so to speak, and we just kind of do the things today that we did yesterday and last year and, you know, whatever it is, because that's what we did. So we made a choice maybe long ago to be in a relationship or to have a certain career or 
whatever it might be, you know, maybe it's even a spiritual practice or uh, belonging to an organization, but you made choices many years ago, perhaps. And I think it's a great time, especially, you know, right now when we're recording, it's the first day of spring and spring's about newness and all of that. So, you know, maybe it's a good time to look back at things and decide those things that I'm doing today. When did I start those things? Why? If I had the choice today to decide to do that, would I still do it? Or am I doing it today because I thought it was a good idea then? And I think if we will continue to ask ourselves those questions, you know, as we go forward in life and give ourselves the courage to perhaps make new choices so that we are engaging in spending our energy in ways that really feel right to us today, when we do that, I think we have more joy in our lives. We have less resentment, you know, whatever. But I think that's a great exercise to do. I do that from time to time. And I ask myself those questions. Do you find yourself doing that too, Kathleen? Oh, absolutely. And I think I've, uh, I would say since COVID, that process has been accelerated. And I, I can really pinpoint it right around COVID time because when COVID hit, when it first hit, I was very close to, I want to say retiring or at least semi-retiring because I was just kind of getting burnt out, I guess, a little tired of what I was doing. I was looking for different avenues, I guess, and ways to spend my energy, as you said thinking about what's serving me and what is not. And then, of course, COVID hit, and then we started the podcast. It was just wonderful. I mean, what a great thing to do during a pandemic to bring these kinds of topics and information to people that were willing to sit and listen to us for an hour, right? And um, (laughs) it's been wonderful. But you're so right that the shift is giving us the opportunity to really think about who we are, what we're doing, where we want to be, who we want to be, and how we're going to get there. And asking ourselves, does this serve me? Does this resonate? Is it in alignment with where I'm going? All those questions, those big existential questions. And before I move into my little personal uh, take on this, i I want to touch base very quickly on something you said earlier, which I think is important to emphasize. And that is, it's not necessary to know about the shift. It doesn't require studying all this. We as humans tend to over label everything. The shift is happening, whether you know about it or not. <laughs> This conversation I recently had that actually, you know, prompted this episode, it doesn't matter if this individual has never heard of the shift. I know that the way this person is living their life, they're contributing to the shift. And that's that's what counts. As we move forward through this process, it's happening whether we understand it or not, or we believe in it or not. Like Andrea said so eloquently, I think it's important for each one of us to Stand in your truth and let your light shine and be the best version of yourself. Continually ask yourself, am I doing the best for myself? And I'm going to throw out another quote that I absolutely love. In fact, I have it framed and hanging right here in my space to remind me from Maya Angelou, who I absolutely love. And the quote is, do the best you can until you know better. And when you know better, do better. What a great way to live your life. It gives us the permission to not beat ourselves up for things we've done before because we didn't know better, right? But when we know better, do better. All right, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. (laughs) I just had to get those couple little (laughs) things in. (laughs) So for me, the shift has really brought a lot of things home. And I would say, particularly in the past few months, and 
it's highlighted for me when it's time to shift. Okay. And I do call it the shift because that's the term that works for me. And so with that in mind, and this Andrea already is aware of this, I have made the decision to leave the podcast at the end of this season. And believe me, it was not an easy decision to make. Took a lot of soul searching. I will say a lot of sleepless nights, but I know that it's the right decision for me during this time. We will be getting into this and some of the reasons going into this in a whole lot more detail in an upcoming episode. But I just wanted to share with our audience that, yes, at the end of this season, I will be departing the podcast. Yeah, it's a time of great change, Kathleen. And I know that it was a very difficult decision for you because you just love the listeners, you love the show, and it's been a super great run with you. And of course, I totally respect your decision, of course. And I think it really highlights what I was saying too. Maybe your example of making such a big shift for yourself, maybe that helps other people make some hard choices for themselves too. And what I was thinking of while you were talking is all of us came here with a purpose for our lifetime. And given that purpose, we came equipped with certain gifts, which make us unique and help us to fulfill that purpose. What I was saying earlier, I think, is in conjunction with that, and it is a great opportunity for us all to ask ourselves, what are my gifts, and am I using these gifts to fulfill what I came here to do? I just think that that is a wonderful example, Kathleen, that you've shared here at the end of the episode with the audience. Thank you. I'm sure you thought about that quite a bit. I did. I would say that uh, just a little bit more about how this came about. During the fall and even into the holiday season, I was feeling so restless and edgy and just, I don't know, discontent, a sense of there's something off. And after the new year, it all seemed to sort of settle down and some things that I had been considering and looking into either disappeared or fell into place. And then I just felt like I fell into place a bit and I was still resisting leaving the podcast. I really was because that's what I do. I just try to talk myself out of things I know that are <laughs> right for me. I finally knew that this was the right choice for me at this time. So it was not like I just woke up one morning and said, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm done. No, it was it was a process. I think what you just suggested is wonderful. Maybe it can serve as an example to our listeners to, to take the time, listen to that still small voice that's going to get louder if you don't pay attention. Follow that guidance. Are you using your gifts? Because we all have them and we all have them to fulfill the purpose for which we were sent here to do it's just a matter of you know you do you stand in your truth listen to that still small voice yes may we all make decisions in highest resonance with who we truly are and why we came here <laughs> that's exactly right yeah absolutely well i think that'll wrap up our show today Thanks for sharing that with our audience, Kathleen. And as Kathleen said, we'll talk more about that in the future down the road. We still have a couple of great guests and more coming up for you yeah, in this season. So be sure to tune in. And of course, find the podcast also now on YouTube, an episode coming out every week. So we're bringing you our classic episodes, if you will, <laughs> uh, on the Wednesdays. A new episode isn't out, but you can always listen over there, too. So. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And oh, my goodness, uh, we wish you all the best. And we'll see you next time. Take good care until next time. We thank you again for joining us. And of course, we invite you to join us next time 
as we journey beyond the Reiki Gateway with Kathleen Johnson and Andrea Kennedy.